In a previous RealPars video, we learned about what a spool valve is and how it works mechanically. If you want to watch that video, we have provided the link to that in the description area. In this video, we will continue this theme and learn about how a spool valve is represented in engineering and manufacturer's drawings, how to understand what the drawing means, and how it relates to the operation of a valve. At RealPars, we love helping you learn. So if you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it, click the like button. Subscribe and click the bell, and you'll receive notifications of new RealPars videos. So you'll never miss another one. As we already know, directional air valves, in particular spool valves, are the building blocks of pneumatic control. In engineering drawings, Pneumatic circuit symbols provide detailed information about the valve they represent. Symbols show the methods of actuation, the number of positions, the flow paths, and the number of ports a valve has. When we see a valve schematic, we can see it is made up of boxes, each containing a number of lines and arrows. The number of boxes that make up a valve symbol indicates the number of possible positions the valve has. Flow direction is indicated by the arrows in each box. These arrows represent the flow path the valve provides when it is in each position. To the left and right of the boxes, we can see the types of actuators being used. In some cases, there will be a single actuator at one end of the boxes and a spring return at the other end. In other cases, there may be an actuator at both ends. Let's look at an example of a typical two-position valve schematic. This valve is controlled by a manual lever and has a spring that returns the valve back to the start position when the lever is not being operated. The current state of the valve is shown by the box immediately next to the active actuator. So in the case of our example, if the lever on the left is not operated, the spring return actuator on the right side is controlling the valve. So we can look at the blue box to see the flow path and ignore the red box. When the lever is actuated, the red box next to the lever shows the flow path of the valve. So we can now look at this and ignore the blue box. Remember, a valve can only be in one position at a given time, and the number of the boxes in its schematic represents the number of the positions it can be in. So in this example, the valve has two positions. Now, let's look at a three-position valve. This three-position valve has both solenoids and spring return actuators on both sides of the valve. The spring return actuators will return the valve to the middle position but only if neither of the solenoids is active. In this example, the middle box indicates that there will be no airflow at all until one of the two actuators is active. It should be noted that colors are used in this video only to assist with learning. In practice, the schematics you see on a day-to-day -day basis will not have any colors. A typical use for this type of valve would be to bump or inch a cylinder incrementally along its stroke length by pulsing one of the actuators. The number of ports a valve has is shown by the number of endpoints in a given box. We should only count the ports in a single box once per symbol. For example, in the three position valve, there are three boxes which show the three possible positions but the valve has five physical ports. So the valve will be called a five by three solenoid valve. You may also see some manufacturers use letters instead of numbers to identify the ports, but once you understand the schematic, it's easy to translate this. In this video, we have continued our theme looking at the construction and operation of spool valves. We have looked at how valves are represented in engineering and manufacturer's drawings, 
and also how to translate those schematics into real-world valve operation. We know that each position of a valve is represented by a box, which shows the physical ports and the direction of flow. We understand where the actuators are shown in the schematic, and if we want to see the valve's current status, we need only to look at the box directly next to the currently active actuator. Some three-position valves can have a middle position, which will be active when neither solenoid is active. Finally, we discuss port numbering and how some manufacturers may use letters instead of numbers. We hope you enjoyed this short video on reading pneumatic valve schematics. If you'd like to learn more about any of the topics covered in this video, head over to our website at realpars.com. We'd love to hear your suggestions for topics you want our team to cover. Want to learn PLC programming in an easy to understand format and take your career to the next level? Head on over to realpars.com.